Hello friends and welcome to Storytime with Teacher Julian. Today's book, Backyard Insects. Backyard Insects was written by Melissa E. Selsom and Ronald Gore. And Ronald Gore took the photographs of all the insects in the book as well. Okay, this book is broken down into four sections. The four sections being Hidden Insects, Warning Colors, Copycat Insects, and Scary Insects. Okay, let's get started. Backyard Insects. Title page, Backyard Insects. So this book is about insects that you might find in your backyard, your front yard, or perhaps nearby where you live. For Margaret Amanda Selsom, and for Ann, Alex, Danny, and Nancy, those are people that they wrote and dedicated the book for, as well as you. Did you know that there are maybe more than a thousand different kinds of insects in your own backyard? A thousand, wow. They live in the grass, on bushes and trees, under rocks, and in the soil, the dirt. Hungry birds, Frogs, lizards, and spiders are always searching for these insects to eat. But insects can escape from them in surprising ways. So remember that first way we were talking about? Hidden insects. Hidden insects. Can you find the three moths in these pictures? Can a hungry bird find them easily? Well, let's get close. Can you see the moth? Yeah, it's right here. It looks like a triangle. So this moth, it is the same as the bark. So it's very difficult to see, especially from farther away, right? So this one looks like bark, and this one looks like part of the tree. Can you see there's his antenna sticking up? There's the wing, there's his little legs. Looks like part of the knobby part of this tree, right? The last, can you find this one? There it is. It's laying on the floor of the of the um, forest with all the leaves and all the other pieces of wood. It blends right in. It says, one looks like the forest floor it is resting on. So these are all camouflaged bugs. Look for twigs with legs and you will find the walking sticks in these pictures. One is green and matches the green twigs. The other is brown and matches the brown twigs of the tree it feeds on. So this is a twig. And this is an insect called a walking stick. Very, very similar. This is its body, and these are its legs and antenna. And here's the green one. There's the body, the little antenna, and there are all of the legs. It looks just like the plant. Is it a young leaf? Suddenly it moves. Now you know it is really an insect. It is called a plant hopper. If you get too close, it will jump to the opposite side of the stem. The veins on its wings are just like the veins of a young leaf. This insect sing, so, sings all night. During the day, it sits quietly. It looks like a leaf too. It is a catadid. Can you find it? So, we look at this one first, the leaf hopper. And yeah, it looks like a leaf. You can see these little lines in it. Those are called the veins. And it looks just like the veins in a plant. Very similar. And when it says it hops to the opposite, well, it's on this side, and it'll jump to the other side. That's the opposite side. So if you have a left hand and you have a right hand, they're opposite of each other. And there's the catadid. It looks just like a leaf, too. Look, these are leaves, and that's a catadid. It's the same shape. Do 
you really have to look three or four times to find the stink bug resting on this bark. It's very hard to find. It also gives off a bad odor. Foochie! And it helps keep its enemies away. Can you see it? I'll get closer. And I'll get closer. There you go. You can see the outline of the bug. And look at the bark. It is so similar. It looks very much the same. And there's the leg, the leg, the antenna. And there's the stink bug. Some caterpillars are hard to find too. Find the one that looks like a rolled edge of a leaf. Find the one that looks like a spike of grass. Well, can you see him? I'll get closer. Well, this is the piece of grass, and this is the caterpillar, and this is the caterpillar right here that's on the edge of the leaf. It looks like it's just rolled over a little bit. Hard to tell. Find the caterpillar that looks like the leaves of a plant. Find the one that looks like a twig. Find the one that looks like flowers. So, what do you think? I'll get closer. Start with this one. This is a branch. This is the caterpillar. Yeah, kind of looks like a stick. This one, I think it's right here, but it blends in so well, I could be wrong. What do you think? And the last, this one right here is the butterfly, or the, um, the caterpillar in there, and it looks just like the rest of the plant. Yep, nobody's going to see that. Those are all camouflaged. The bagworm caterpillar carries its bag around the way a snail carries a shell. The bag is made of twigs and pieces of leaves held together by silk. At the top of the photo, see how the caterpillar comes part of the way out of the bag to munch on green leaves. Well, there's all of the twigs and everything that they made the bag out of, and there is the tip of it right there sticking his head out to eat. Look over here. After feeding all summer, it attaches the bag to a twig and there it changes into an adult moth. So they have the bag and then now look, that's part of the cocoon that protects it while it's changing. Incredible. A frothy bunch of bubbles is fastened to the tender plant stem. It looks like bubbles, right? Look at all those little bubbles. And they're attached to the plant. An insect is hidden inside. It sucks plants' juices hour after hour and gives off the soapy liquid that covers it. It's called a frog hopper. When insects are hidden or look like they're look like the places where they live, they are protected from their enemies. This kind of protection is called natural camouflage. So I've used that word before, and camouflage just means that it looks like its surrounding area. So if, it, if the area that it lives is green and bumpy, its body will be green and bumpy as well. If it's brown and has little things sticking out of it, it will look like it will be brown and have things sticking out of it too to camouflage what it looks like. Our next section is insects with warning colors. Not all insects are hard to find. Many of them have very bright colors. Their enemies can easily see them, but they do not go after them. The bright bands of black and yellow on bees and wasps are warning colors. It gives the message, I sting. Right? So if you see a bee or a wasp, you know it might sting. So you stay back and stay away from it. 
let them be. Toads try to catch honeybees, but after getting stung a few times, they leave them alone, even though they are very hungry. So here is a, looks like a wasp, and this is a honeybee. Yeah, wasp and honeybee. So you see the colors, the yellow and the black? You remember what that means? I sting. That's right. It says I sting to anybody around. Brightly colored ladybird beetles give the message I taste bad and are not eaten by very many birds. I think we call these ladybugs, but in here they call them ladybirds. I'm sure they're this very similar. The monarch butterfly has orange and black colors. The colors warn that this butterfly is bitter and poisonous. You don't want to eat that. So a bird or any other animal come by and try to eat it. Eh, I don't like it. It don't taste good. It's poisonous. If a bird swallows a monarch butterfly, it gets sick and throws up. After that, it does not try to eat a monarch butterfly. So there he is. There's the monarch butterfly. And that one, well, he tore his wing off and he's trying to eat it. He don't like it. No me gusta. It don't taste good. And he won't eat any more of those monarch butterflies. The monarch butterfly gets its poison from a plant called milkweed. It feeds on this plant when it's a caterpillar. And the caterpillar shows warning colors too. And it is also poisonous. See all the bright colors? Yellow and black and white. We look at it and say, ooh, that looks beautiful. But we also know that that makes it dangerous, poisonous, or something we don't want to... We don't want to mess with. Many other insects with warning colors live on plants in the milkweed family. Look at the bright colors of the milkweed beetle and the milkweed bug and the caterpillar of the harlequin moth. Birds leave these poisonous insects alone once they have tried them. See that? So this one right here is the milkweed beetle. And this is the milkweed bug. And the milk, oh, the harlequin moth. It looks very hairy. But at the same time, it's very colorful. See those colors? Stay away. Our next section is copycat insects. Look at the two butterflies in the picture. One is a monarch butterfly. The other is a viceroy butterfly that looks almost exactly like it. There's a small difference. A dark line across the viceroy's hind wings. That's, that would be this right here. You see, this one doesn't have it. And this one does... The caterpillars of the viceroy do not feed on milkweed, so they don't have the milkweed poison in them. But birds leave the viceroys alone because they're copies or mimics of the monarch. So this guy right here eats milkweed, milkweed and they're poisonous or they don't taste good to birds. And this one, remember with the little black line right here? They are not poisonous, and they, they might taste delicious, but the birds won't eat them because they think that it's a yucky tasting one. Look at that. They look almost exactly the same. Copycat. Here are three insects that mimic the colors of wasps. One is a fly. One is a beetle, and the other is a moth. They're all harmless, but their enemies avoid these wasp colors. Remember, I said, if it's black and yellow, they might look beautiful, but they're dangerous. They might sting you. 
Well, these guys are copycats. They don't have a stinger, but you might see them and be like, whoop, I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't want to get stung. They no stingers. Our last section is called scary insects. So what do you think? Does that look scary to you? Look at that face. I see two eyes and a nose and a mean looking mouth. Kind of scary looking, right? Some insects flash bright spots of color that look like eyes. The Cecropia silkworm moth spreads its wings. Suddenly, it becomes a giant face with big eyes. They're not really eyes, but they look like scary eyes. Even caterpillars flash eyes. This caterpillar is the swallowtail butterfly. It can suddenly show an enormous pair of false eyes. The false eyes are just spots of color on the caterpillar's skin. But these spots frighten away many birds because a bird's own enemies, owls, cats, and hawks, have such eyes. The swallowtail's real eyes are tiny and they're on the sides of the head in front of the false eyes. So, you can see right here that this looks like a snake, right? And here's like these big eyes, and it looks like a snake looking at you. But really, the eyes of this are somewhat smaller and to the sides. This would be the, the front of it. Maybe the eyes are down over here somewhere? They're tiny, this it says. What do you think? If you look at the next slide, you'll see where the real eyes are on the caterpillar, okay? Birds may stay away from this click beetle too, because the patches of color on its back look like big eyes. Look at that, there's the two big eyes, actually its eyes are like right in front. The click beetle still has another way of protecting itself from enemies. When it's touched, it gives a loud click. Then it tucks its legs and drops to the ground. It usually lands on its back and lies still for a few minutes. Then suddenly, it snaps back up into the air and lands on its feet. It may get away before the bird picks it up. So it uses that as its defense. Imagine coming face to face with this monster while climbing your favorite hickory tree. It is called the Hickory Horned Devil. It can be up to seven inches long. Wow. It can also be as fat as a big cigar, or like a hot dog. It also has eight long black tipped orange horns. And when attacked, this caterpillar whips its horns from side to side. Most birds leave and look for another insect meal. What do you think? If you were a bird, would you want to eat that? If you were think you're going to get hit by one of these horns? Remember, it's going like this, moving its head back and forth. And seven inches long? That's pretty long. That's at least as big as this picture. Like that big. That's big. Okay, the next section we have is called Insects with Two Heads. Will this gray hair streak butterfly get away to the left or to the right? Where is its head? When attacked, the butterfly suddenly darts off and often it leaves its enemy with a piece of wing instead of its actual head. So look at this and tell me where is the bug's head? Now, if you said that this is, the, is its head, you would be wrong. Its real head is over here. It looks like it has a face and, and antenna, 
but there's a real bug. Insects have so many ways to escape. You might wonder, are they ever found and eaten? They are. But the ones that are hidden or have warning colors or look like bad tasting insects or scare off their en enemies are the ones that live longest. They lay the most eggs that grow up into insects like themselves. These insects survive better than the ones that do not have such protection. So when it says here that it has its enemies, enemies are, are would be somebody that was trying to eat them. That would be an enemy for a bug, like perhaps a bird or another insect, maybe even a human. Some humans eat insects too. So those would all be enemies of the insect. All right, friends, now that we've read backyard insects and we have an idea of some of the insects that might be in your backyard, why don't you get a family member or a friend or somebody go in your backyard get like a little stick or something and you can start poking around um, in the dirt uh, along the, among the plants see if you can find some insects over there you can find worms which weren't in the book but they're definitely out there roly-polies ladybugs so many different insects get them and maybe you can even bring some paper and a pen with you draw a picture of some of the insects you see you can share those with your family, with your friends, with your teacher and your classmates. Share your artwork, your stories, and your ideas with your friends and your family. Well, that's all I have for you today, friends. So until next time, I will say goodbye.